Good morning and welcome to this webinar that we are running in conjunction with NTA. This webinar is the Axel Weight Calculator Basics webinar. You're all very welcome, especially NTA members. We've partnered with NTA to offer a next level solution Axel Weight Calculator. So we're always happy to meet our NTA friends. My name is Sarah O'Grady and I'm the Sales and Marketing Director at Truck Science. We're going to be talking about work trucks today. A good work truck is one that has high payload, low fuel consumption, avoids undue maintenance, and is legal on the road. I'm going to show you how to use the axle weight calculator to design efficient and compliant trucks. For the purposes of the demo, we'll configure a Ford F550 with a crane service body and a trailer. A quick overview of what we'll cover before we get into the demo. I'm going to show you how to define your preferences for how you use the app. We'll cover how to use the Truck Science Library and indeed add your own items to it. We'll check compliance against OEM limits and regulation limits. We'll briefly touch on center of gravity, static rollover and turning radius. I'll show you how to share your designs with other users of the Truck Science app as well as with your customers. And lastly, I'll show you where to get help if you get stuck while using the app. So I'm just going to share my screen with you now, if you bear with me for a moment. And I'm going to use this little icon here to go full screen to take full advantage of the screen space available. This is the screen that you're met with when you log into the Axle Weight Calculator from the truckscience.com homepage. To start a new calculation, you'll first need to choose a vehicle. You can browse vehicle brands and ranges here like Ford, Super Duty, 4x4, or you can shortcut this by typing in the, in the filters or the searches above. So I'm just going to go for a 550 regular cab. And for this demo, we're going to choose an 84 inch CA vehicle, a diesel version, um, which will accommodate an 11 foot service body. The graphical representation of the vehicle takes up the majority of the screen. Input menus are here on the left hand side. They're ordered by vehicle body, equipment and payload and so on for trailers. When deciding whether to add an item as body, equipment or payload, you can consider the following guidelines. We consider a body to have payload capacity whereas equipment does not. And equipment is permanent, permanently attached to the vehicle where a uh, payload is loaded on and off. Before we get to these views on the right hand side and this information at the bottom of the screen, we'll add a body. You can choose from these predefined body categories or other if your body category is not shown. Let's add a service body. You can search the public library for preloaded well-known brands such as Reading, This is a preloaded body that is already in our library. Since it is a standard spec from the Reading website, a regular user will not have permission to edit dimensions or weights on this body. You'll note that they're blocked here. So I'm going to remove it again using this scissors. Another option is to use a template service body. These are, the templates are always placed first in the list. This is a more flexible body, but the graphic is not as pretty as what you just saw. Now is a good time to point out these color coded indica indicators at the bottom of the screen. The compliance scorecard on the left indicates if manufacturer ratings, bridge limits or dimensions are exceeded. And the weights table on the right includes a detailed breakdown of chassis weight, fuel and crew weight, the body weight, total unladen weight for the vehicle, and then auto calculates the maximum achievable payload given the current setup. That figure is highlighted in blue here in the total column. Currently stands at 8,716 pounds. Blue text on the drawing indicates shortcuts. So on the drawing or the weight table. So if I click on chassis weight here, I can open the uh, place in the menu from where I can override that. 
or if I click on this body length, I will get a small dimension here that I can move around to so that it does not obscure my drawing and I can edit that also here. If I pop that menu in, you can see a more detailed dimensions and weights menu here. Note how the weights in the weights table below update as I drag the body around. I can click undo at any time to uh, undo the previous action. I hover over the body to uh, highlight it and click on that to edit, for instance, dimensions. I'm going to set the length to 133 and the height to 38. If we go to the weights tab, you can see that a default weight has been provided. Defaults should always be overridden when you have know a more accurate value. We can set this to 91 pounds per foot. You can also specify this as an absolute value in pounds. Reducing the weight of the body uh, increases the maximum achievable payload and vice versa. So if I just reduce this weight, you'll notice that the payload figure will increase. And if I increase it again, the payload figure in the total uh, column of the weights table is updated as we go. Let's add some equipment now. Equipment is found in the third icon here on the left. I'll start by adding a crane. We can search for a brand we already know, or you can import a DXF file below. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Note that when, as soon as I add the crane, the crane's weight is included in this unladen weight uh, below the drawing. I can hover over the, the crane to highlight it in blue and then can drag it backwards on the vehicle. Note how the weights are updated on the fly as, as the crane is dragged backwards. Next, I'll add a generator. This is also, in this case, an item of equipment as it is permanently attached to the vehicle. If I don't find a category here for the item I wish to add, in this case, generator, I use the other category below. I can search for a generator in the public library. Choose this Lincoln generator. Again, the weight is immediately included in our, our weights table below. I can hover on the uh, generator to highlight it in blue and then drag it. I can also click on it to open the menu on the left hand side from where I can specify its uh, position more accurately. I'm going to set it at 26 inches above the chassis. Next I'll add a step and the process is the same again. I can find one in the public library, indeed I can use a template if there isn't one there. By default, it's added behind the cab. I need to just hover over it to drag it back. Once again, I can click on the step to specify its position more accurately. I'm going to make it 12 inches below the chassis and 134 from the back of cab. We can also override its default weight, say 120 the center of gravity. I can set this as a percentage, say 45%, or I can specify it as an absolute value in inches. If you're unsure where the center of gravity is measured from, you can click this information icon to read more. We should probably add some outriggers, but we're going to skip that step to save some time here. As we have seen, information is input on the left side of the screen, and I will show you the various views here on the right in a moment. First, we're just going to click on the body to uh, edit the compartment depth. Before I do that, I'm going to go to top view here. We're inside view. I'm going to switch to top view. If I click on the body and then width, I can edit the compartment depth to 25 inches on each side. 
While I'm here, I'll also position this equipment laterally on the vehicle. Lateral position of equipment and payload affects the vehicle's static rollover angle. This can be found in the notes and warnings section here on the bottom right. The vehicle static rollover angle has been calculated as 43 degrees. Let's go back to the side view now to examine our payload. To do this, we need to understand the difference between the vehicle's potential payload, the maximum payload achievable with the current configuration and user-defined payload. Let's start with the potential payload. The total weight of this vehicle is constrained by the total permissible or the sum of the axle permissibles. The permissible is, row is the second last here in the table. Let's click on one of those values to see what I'm talking about. Here we can see the permissible vehicle total is 18,000 pounds. This value is derived as the lesser of the gross vehicle weight, weight rating specified by the manufacturer of 18,000 and the bridge limit, which is determined by the legislation of 40,000. So in this case, the permissible vehicle total is 18,000 pounds. The same applies for axle two, which is the rear axle. The gross axle weight rating in this case is 13,660 and the bridge limit uh, as per the regulations, is 20,000, giving the lesser of uh, to make up the permissible of 13,660. Once again, if I go to the axle one front, I can see the chassis weight, which is the weight on the um, bare vehicle chassis before we added body equipment and payload. We've got the gross axle weight rating of 6,500, bridge limit of 20,000, and the permissible is derived from the lesser of the gross axle weight rating and the bridge weight rating, giving us 6,500. So in this case, the uh, permissible total is 18,000 and the permissible on the rear axle is 13,660 and on the front axle is 6,500. So the lesser of the sum of axle one and two and total is 18,000 and that is what is giving us, uh, that is what is constraining the payload that will be allowed onto this vehicle. If we take that total permissible of 18,000 minus the total unladen of 10,266, we get our potential payload, which is 7,734. In this case, this matches the automatically calculated payload of 7,734. So we're uh, can rest assured that we're realizing this vehicle's full potential payload. We'll get to user-defined payload later, but for now, we have a proposal that we can agree with our customer. The vehicle's GVWR is 18,000. The payload is 7,734. Now we can send this design to our draftsman so that we can get a more realistic body drawing uh, to be sh shared on the customer sign-off document. So before we send it to the draftsman, we're just going to share it to our own profile, or sorry, save it. And I can just give it uh, any name I like. And then we click on this share icon to share it to, to an email address. This feature is also helpful if you need to reach out to Truck Science for help while using the app. You can share it with support at truckscience.com. And we can also uh, share it to our draftsman, draftsman at mycompany.com. And we invite them to, to open it in the, the app themselves. Now let's replace the template body that we had added earlier with this uh, drawing that we received back from our draftsman. We click on the body. I'm going to use the scissors to remove the body. I'm going to go back into service body, but this time, instead of using a template or the, the reading body that was in the public library, I'm going to import a DXF file.
That looks right. I'm going to specify the length of my body, which remember was 133. Cross member height of five inches and chassis top to body bottom of 12 inches. Specify width of 94 inches. And you'll remember the depth of our compartments was 25 inches. Next, I want to provide a weight for this body, 997. Give it a name. And we'll add it to our drawing. So now we have a more impressive graphic to share with our customer. If I go back into this imported body, I can click on save to add it to either my personal library, team library where my colleagues can reuse it, or indeed I can allow the wider truck science community to reuse the body if I'd like to promote it there in the app. For now, I'll just select team. Now, if I remove the body and go back into add it, I'll find it in my team library. Up to now, we've been talking about a simple, evenly distributed load, uh, this figure that has been auto calculated based on our current setup. But we're going to define some uh, user defined point loads now. So we click on the payload figure on the, on the table or on the drawing, or indeed I can just access the payload menu here on the left. They all bring me to the same place. I'm going to specify payload as detailed payload. And you'll see these familiar uh, library areas again here, template, personal, team, and public. You can import a DXF file as we just did for body, or you can choose what we call a generic payload template. I can hover over this template to edit it, giving it uh, a sensible description, dimensions, position, you can move it in from the edges, two inches in every direction. And now I want to specify its weight. It's added by, by default with a weight of 1,000 pounds. Uh, and you can see that figure is used as the payload figure now on the drawing. I'm going to specify the weight as 750 pounds. But first, let's try it uh, just doing a typo. We'll set it to 7,500 to see what happens. Straight away, I can see that I've got compliance issues. The compliance scorecard on the left is indicating that my manufacturer ratings have been exceeded. And the weights table on the right shows that I'm overloaded on the front axle. If we click on the permissible value here of 6,500, we can remind ourselves why that is. We've got a permissible of 6,500 because the gross axle weight rating is 6,500 and the bridge limit of 20,000 is not of much help to us here can uh, sorry, make... sorry. before you move on from the payload uh, there's a question about um whether the def uh, whether the def is included in the fuel and crew uh, i explained that um, one would have to add a separate tank and specify um the number of gallons in the tank and everything and um maybe if you could just highlight the payload there of seven thousand five hundred pounds and you just, just click it in the menu um and within this area you could you could name this the def tank for instance and if you click on the weights tab uh you can specify that as volume and then specify the the number of gallons and the density and uh, and configure your def uh, like that i hope that answers the question okay so i just want to rename this back to tools specify uh, the weight of those tools again is 7,500. 
So we've got this uh, permissible limit here on the front axle of 6,500. Uh, as I mentioned, you can make that problem going away by uh, upgrading an axle if that's if it's, if you're specking a vehicle and you have an option of a, a stronger axle. So let's do that quickly. You can see straight away uh, we're no longer overloaded on that front axle. But uh, if you remember from earlier, we had upwards of 7,500 pounds in payload available to us. So I'm going to undo this override and rather just drag those tools further back along the, um, the body. As we drag, you'll see that the table of weights is being up updated as we go. And at, at some point on, as we go along here, we reach a sweet spot where neither the front axle or the rear axle is, is overloaded anymore. However, if we drag it too far back, we can see that now we're overloaded on the rear axle. So you can see that there's a range of um, values there where you can uh, place the tools where you won't overload either axle, but there are also danger areas where if it's too far forward or back, um, an axle will become overloaded. So if we just click the undo button, we can get that um, get those tools to where where they're um, legal. Remember that the the um, blue figures on the drawing or in the table are shortcuts. So if I just click on this seven thousand five hundred here, I can specify um, weight back to seven hundred and fifty. I'm going to add a trailer now. So first, I need to add a hitch. Drag it along there. And I can use this trailer one icon to add uh, the first trailer. This uh, fourth item in the list is a trailer that I've saved already to my personal library. The three before that are templates, as you can see from the icons on the left of them. And the last one is something that is in the uh, in my team library. When we've added a trailer, we get these a new set of icons for the trailer body, trailer equipment, and trailer payload. So I'm just going to add one item of trailer payload now. Again, I'll switch to detail payload since this is not an evenly distributed load. And I'm going to add a bobcat. You can see that tongue weight is expressed as a percentage of the total trailer weight. That's the trailer body and uh, payload weight. So if I drag the bobcat along, we can get to a healthier tongue weight also. I'm on a small screen here, so the, the, um, the tongue weight is slightly obscured by payload. So I'm going to switch to the top view to center the bobcat vertically, or laterally, sorry. and then back again to the side view. You can explore these views in detail in your own time, but we'll, I'll just show you uh, a few of them now quickly. We switch from the overview summary to the, the vehicle view. We get a detailed breakdown of everything that's on the vehicle and its distribu distribution of its weight over the front, rear and rear axles. We've got a bridge view. This compares the actual weights on each axle group with uh, the permissible weights for those axle groups. You can review a center of gravity view, which shows you the centers of gravity of every item that we've added to the drawing so far. If you click on any of those center of gravity points, you can pin that center of gravity point to the drawing to read off uh, the dimensions or the measurement of the center of gravity from the ground or in the rear axle in this case. You can see the smallest uh, circle in which this truck can turn. And as I showed you earlier, you can uh, review the static rollover angle of both the vehicle and the trailer here in the notes and warnings. To export the current view to a PDF document for customer sign off, um, you can click on this PDF icon in any of the views.
You can add additional notes here, customer's name and phone number to be added to the signature area at the bottom. It's, this file is, the PDF is obviously customized with your logo and you can print, download or email the file directly from here. Second and third pages include detail on center of gravity points, weights, weight distribution, uh, load planning, all of that kind of thing. If at any time you need help uh, while using the app, or if there's something that you're not uh, quite clear on, you can pop open this chat here and uh, just start a new conversation with us um, just to look for some help. From within that, we can uh, do a screen share for, with you if necessary. When you're finished with your calculation, you just need to save it and then head back out to the home screen. And before we wrap up the demo, I just want to point out a few things here on, on the home screen. You'll see there that the chat has come back. Uh, Hi, Sarika, how can I help? I'll leave that for now. Uh, just testing. <laughs> On the home screen, or indeed from within the calculations, you can specify in your settings how you like to think of uh, how you like to measure cab and chassis dimensions. So in this case, we measured cab as front axle to back of cab, but you have the option to specify bumper to back of back, back of cab there. And uh, you can specify chassis dimensions as CA or CT, or indeed wheelbase. You can also also choose your preferred measurement system here, imperial or metric, and the increment uh, by which the uh, fields will uh, inc increase or decrease when you click on the plus and minus tickers from within the app. You can choose between US federal and Canadian uh, memorandum of understanding regulations here. And you can integrate your NTA login details to get an extended free trial if you're if you're just trying out the app or to uh, qualify for NTA discounts as a subscriber. We've recently added this resources section on the bottom left. In here, you will find uh, recordings of previous webinars, short explainer videos, for instance, around specifying those maximum permissible weights that we touched on earlier and useful documents, for example, uh, links to the OEM bodybuilder guides. Calculations shared with me is where our draftsman would have found the calculation we shared earlier. And my saved calculations is obviously pretty self-explanatory and you can do the normal um, folder management uh, things in here like um, nesting files within folders or nesting folders, sharing calculations, renaming, deleting, all of that kind of thing. Lastly, when starting a new calculation, earlier we uh, filtered the list by uh, Ford regular F550. We can reset that. Um, if we hadn't found the vehicle that we were looking for, we could have requested a vehicle um, and our, our, the truck science team would have added that for you. Or if you're in a rush and you can't find the vehicle you need and you don't have time to request it, you can alternatively use what we call it a vehicle template. I'll quickly show you one of those now. The graphic is obviously uh, not as pretty, but you have much greater flexibility in terms of the fields that you can edit on this. So we're going to wrap up the demo now. Um, I just need to switch back to my uh, presentation. And so if you have any questions, happy to take them. Yeah, I had a question there about uh, whether the the other side view is available as well. And um, I was just explaining there that um, that currently you can only see the side view and the top view. Um, so you one would have to do one's best to place it place it vertically in the current side view and then and, and, and perhaps the perhaps the answer is 
to place it vertically in the side view uh, to the left of the vehicle and then flip it to the top view and position it laterally then on the far side. So you get the vertical position correct in the, in the side view and then flip it to the top view. Unfortunately, that's the only workaround um, we can offer at this stage. But um, as I said, we do release updates to the app every, every six to 10 weeks and prioritize new features based on uh, user requests. So I'll certainly pass that on to our product manager. Um, other than that, uh, there, aren't, there aren't any questions. Um, so feel free to, uh, to ask away. Okay, so just to, to wrap up, I know we've covered uh, quite a lot in a short time. Um, if you feel that you could still use a personalized demo, we'd be more than happy to arrange that for uh, yourself and maybe some colleagues. So please do reach out to us either through the chat here today, you can leave a comment after the webinar, or you can uh, just email me back later to request a personalized demo for, for your team. If you're not already using Truck Science, you're welcome to start a free trial from the homepage of our website, which is truckscience.com. Um, if you do integrate your NTA member details in the settings uh, where I just showed you, the seven day trial is automatically upgraded to a 30 day trial. So that there is, um, it, it is worth doing that if you're, if you're planning to, do, to take a trial. I just included some information here on pricing and discounts. Uh, this question normally comes up. So the regular price for non-NTA members is $4.49 per year. And uh, NTA member price is uh, $3.99 per year. And we are running a Black Friday um, coupon until next Friday. So if you plan to subscribe by the end of next week, uh, you can use the code BF2020 at checkout. And then you, you'll get $100 off your first year. Uh, if anyone needs that code, just pop me an email. I can send it through to you. Uh, so that's all for today. If, if we don't have any more questions, um, I'm going to end the webinar in a moment. Uh, if, if, before you go, if you could please rate the webinar and uh, leave any comments or questions. If you have any remaining questions, you can also leave them in the comments and we will revert to you um, by email. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think I'm just going to end it here. Thank you. Goodbye.